Obviously, I mean, if you look at just the geography or the topography of the Dungeness Valley, the river is the main artery, and it provides water for development, provides water for agriculture, provides water for species and critters that live on the river, and so the challenge is to balance that. The long-term goal is to recover fish to harvestable levels. I know every river has its people, and it's so important. You'd think that it'd be just in words, but no, it isn't. It's in spirit, too. The Dungeness River flows from the tops of the Olympic Mountains down through the Squim Valley and empties into the Strait of Juan de Fuca at Dungeness Spit. Along with its tributary, the Grey Wolf River, they drain an area of almost 270 square miles. I live in the watershed, so you know I like to think about the watershed as not just what happens in and right next to the river, but everything that happens upstream as well. And so it affects whether there are salmon, wildlife, uh, safe places for people to live, uh, shellfish in Dungeness Bay, and uh, all the things that make this a nice place to live. I'm a veterinarian that's lived here for since 1991. And my wife and I are the very happy owners of five acres, which includes one and a half acres of riparian property along the uh, Dungeness River. The most important part of what we wanted to save is this riparian area, which we're standing right in the middle. Uh, this is a side channel of the Dungeness River. These easements are an agreement between the land trust and the property owners. Uh, we still own the property. We listed everything we want to do on the property in our agreement, our easement agreement, and we have full use of the property, except for what we agreed not to do. Dungeness Farms is the uh, property at the very mouth of the Dungeness River. Uh, the club owns about 50 acres on each side of the river. It was a good learning for everyone, I think. We, we were able to express who we were and we were able to learn a lot about the other issues and that, you know, here we are 20 some years later and we're still learning, but it's, it's, been, uh, it's been great for us to, uh, to participate. I, I do remember telling uh, Randy Johnson right off the bat, I said, well, if you can show me that it's good for ducks, then, you know, we will, we will proceed ahead. And, uh, sure enough, Randy was able to convince me that uh, opening up some fresh water, getting some fresh water into that estuary tidal exchange in that back area was going to be good for ducks, and he was right on the money. Just a few miles to the west of the Dungeness River, on McDonald Creek, the Jamestown, Sklalem, and Elwha tribes teamed up with local landowners like Paul Macbeth and came up with a creative way to help restore the stream. You're looking down ac across my property at uh, some salmon habitat uh, project work that we did. Uh, large woody debris that were brought in under a, a federal grant. This is a, a type of project I think that, that's pretty new to most people, at least most of the new residents in, in the valley. And so what I did is went and knocked door to door and, and talked to people and introduced themselves as, as a new neighbor and, and, and told them I had an opportunity to do some work on the creek that would not only help the creek and the salmon, but it would increase their property values and it would make things uh, uh, you know, just nicer down here to come and, uh, come and enjoy. And uh, people were receptive. It was pretty easy to sell. Well, over the course of the years that I worked on the Dungeness, it seemed like we were working on layer after layer of, of what was potentially contributing to the problems in the river. And it turned out that it was pretty much everything. At first, we thought it was just a lack of water. The main thing was just to start getting out there and talking to the landowners. Figuring out how to work together to fix the damage caused by dikes along the river has been one of the biggest challenges to restoring the watershed. Uh, rivers need room to move. Floodplains of rivers are like the lungs of a river system. And so during a flood, the, those lungs, those floodplains, breathe in water. And then as the flood recedes, they slowly release that water. The irrigation community is the largest user of Dungeness River water. In the past, 
their rights to Dungeness River surface water exceeded actual river flow for many months of the year. Over the past two decades, agricultural water users have made improvements to their infrastructure and practices and have signed agreements to reduce their water withdrawals. So my name is Ben Smith. Um, I'm a dairy farmer here in Squim. One advantage that our community has has been way out in front on in the in the state um, and probably in the nation is our ability to cooperate. If we all work together heading in the same direction, um, you know, I mean, we can do a lot of good things. I just think it's really important that we all work together for the health of the for the egg and all the rest. I think it has improved their property value. Uh, I mean, there's nothing here that can hurt anything, and so uh, I think everybody's for salmon. You know, that's I can't imagine that you wouldn't be. <laughs> well, my hopes for the river and and our property are is that they continue to be improved upon. Uh, our property, uh, you can't really improve on perfection. <laughs> the river uh, needs a little more help.